I first heard about Good Vibrations uh, about three years ago in the Parador, my local, um, which is in the Ormo Road. And it was David Holmes who mentioned it to me. Um, and he just said, I think you'd make a great Terry. Um, that, yeah, so that's the first I heard about it. And I'd heard the name before, Terry Hooley, but um, I didn't know that much about him. I knew that he was a bit of a Belfast legend, but um, I didn't know that much at all. I just really, I really liked Terry. I just l liked him instantly. Um, so it was easy, e e pretty easy to get under his, his, his skin. And once, once I'd kind of got the voice and then I put on these shoes and I got the walk and I just thought, right, you know, this is, this is him, you know? And the passion that he has and the joy that he has, I think is, uh, and I, th I hope it comes across in, in the film, but that's that's really his his thing. His uh, energy is just pure joy, just hunger, lust for life. Whenever I first heard him, I just was I couldn't believe that he sounded like that. I thought I I want to do I I want to get that right because it's to catalogue that and to have that forever, that that's the way, that's the way a certain um, person in Belfast speaks. I just thought, yeah, this is great, that kind of halting, kind of, you know, that kind of thing, that talking, you know, and that kind of, you know, that, that there's a bounce to it as well, and a, there's an excitement and a kind of happiness to it that I really like. I listened to um, the, the stuff on the internet of Shell Shock Rock when he's talking about um, when he's going, you know, when when he recorded the big time Rudy and he's going, you know, there's just no payola. It's just the kids in their own clothes and it's just they're up there on stage and it's fantastic. And I just took that, that word, especially fantastic. And I went, that's him. Whatever, whatever I can't really describe it, but whatever way he says the word fantastic just sums him up. And I just thought that's it. Two months before film began, I went over to London um, to the Real Eye Company, who do all the eyes for like, you know, 28 days later and all those things, the special effects, lenses. Um, and what it is, it's a sleral lens. It's about the size of a 50 pence piece. And it basically folds under the eyelids and covers the entire eye. And uh, you can't see anything out of it, which is great, which is really helpful um, as an actor. I could have had one with a pinhole in it so I could see out, but I said, no, I want to be blind in that eye because it really affects your, your physicality. And if you actually watch Terry, he raises his left shoulder slightly. And I think it's to compensate for his eye because he's blind in that side. It's like the shoulder's gonna hit something before his, the side of his head. Um, so just his everything has been affected by his uh, lack of sight in that eye. I mean, he hears incredibly well as well as I think his senses are heightened because he's only got the one eye. Um, that's why I think as well he loves music because his his oral the world of music has kind of replaced the visual world for him. I think, um, and also the speaking. You know that's why he can talk so much and form massive monologues because it's it's all happening here you know he can it's all about the hearing it's just as soon as i um as soon as i met her i was just like wow she's just perfect for the part you know she's a real she's a real just a nice human being um and when i first met her she was coming down the corridor and i just went the future mrs hooley and she just said well that's that's a great introduction <laughs> So uh, yeah, no, she's just uh, a, a real joy. It's very rare you get to work with a with an actor who's so generous and um, and funny and just so easy to be with. It's just a really nice person. I think it's um, he's kind of the like I said, he's the kind of the facilitator of Terry's dreams and ambitions, you know, and he's also the one who keeps his feet firmly on the ground, whereas Terry's up in the clouds. Um, and I think you always find that um, 
in creative, uh, you know, with creative people, they always need someone to be a grounding force and someone who's always going to keep their head, you know, their head screwed firmly on their shoulders. I mean, there there is a scene in the film whenever they're sitting drunk in the bar and and Dave says, "Look, you know, you you're drinking too much." And then Terry says, "Well, I always drink too much. Everybody we know drinks too much." But he's going, no, but this is different. I think you just need to, you know, get it together. And Terry just turns on him and instantly regrets it. But because they're, they, I think the friendship is so strong, they have, they have, their friendship allows that. Do you know what I mean? They have such a familiarity that they can call each other complete bastards and then just, you know, the next day it's forgotten about. In the 70s, I was in short pants running around listening to the Bay City Rollers and all those, you know. <laughs> ABBA. Uh, <coughs> and Johnny Cash. Um, and punk was just a dirty word because uh, my mum and dad, you know, were like going, oh, I don't know, terrible punks, dirty, nasty punks with their sticking their fingers up and their spiked hair, you know. Um, so, no, I didn't, I didn't listen to punk or any of that. In fact, the first time I heard of the Sex Pistols, I blushed because I knew it must have been dirty. And I, and I remember hearing God Save the Queen and thinking, oh, Jesus, this is, really, this is a really nasty song about the Queen. <laughs> Not that I cared much about the Queen. It's just I was like, oh, God love her, like, you know, having a song written like that about her is terrible. But, uh, uh, yeah, it was just um, an alien world to me, that whole scene. Which I think is good, in a way, because I approached it um, with a kind of a, a fresh eye, if you like, because you know I, I didn't have all the baggage of of uh, Terry and Good Vibrations. It was just it was all, all new to me. A lot of screenplays that you read uh, it can be very impressive on the page, but as soon as you start to do them, it, the, the the dialogue can be very flat. Whereas this one, you look at it in the page and you go, right, that's good. But then as soon as you do it, you go, oh, this is great. And I don't know why, I don't know why that is. I think, I think it's a lot to do with the fact that, that, um, that they knew Terry so well. And that, you know, um, I think Glenn's known him for about 10 years now, that the story's been kicking around. And it's that Terry sense of humor as well. It's very acerbic, it's very kind of, um, you know it's witty and it's but there there's so much subtext going on on every single scene in the film and when you're doing it you're you're just aware of something it's like greater than what you're actually playing because it, it, it's just it's just very nicely um very very nicely put together i think the story and uh, and really i mean you read like ulster hall to Terry sings, laugh at me. But then you get 2,000 people and you get them screaming and you get the the emotional release of that. And wow, this is the end of the film. And it's just, it's epic. It's fantastic. Really, it's a lovely human story. And it's a love story too. Um, and it's just about this guy who just won't give up, who just keeps going, who just, just even when the world seems to be just kicking him around, he just keeps getting up and going, no, you know what? I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna aim high. And I just think it's really a, a real uplifting, um, life-affirming kind of story. Good Vibrations is in a record shop. It's not a label. It's a way of life.